Hey, uh, good morning, guys. Uh, welcome to the Worship Ministry course. Once again, um, it's good to know that you all are doing well. Um, hey, Prince, can I request you to start us off with a prayer, please? Yes, sir. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, you've given us the word in one more day, Lord, in our life. Thank you in this time, Lord, to submit to you. Lord, as we are going to learn your word from the was the ministry lord help us to learn your word and help us help us to how you organize us to for your kingdom and your worship lord thank you i submit all the student and the pastor lord in your mighty hand help us to understand i submit all things to you in jesus name i pray amen amen thank you sorry thank you prince okay let me go ahead and share my screen all right so uh, last week we started off with chapter three that's worship ministry as an introduction okay so let's do a quick recap of uh, what we've covered so far uh, from this chapter Okay, so uh, in this chapter, we basically saw that worship ministry is very different from only leading worship. Um, so if your understanding of worship ministry was uh, only, if you thought that worship ministry is only about leading worship uh, every Sunday, uh, no, it's not just that, okay? But uh, it's a lot more to it than that, okay? There are so many skills that uh, you are expected to possess, uh, have okay uh, and because it can be challenging uh, and because it is very demanding as a person um, you know you need to make sure that there are four certain relationships uh, that uh, that you need to keep it healthy uh, for you to be effective um, and uh, successful in, 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 in this ministry okay so those that four uh, relationships um, were your relationship with God, okay? No matter how busy uh, you think uh, you can get uh, and and whatnot, you know, whatever the reason or excuse that you come up with, uh, just, just make sure that your relationship with God is on point. It's not compromised, okay? Um, and your relationship with your family, Okay, your as we see that your first church is your family. Uh, they observe, they they watch you, they watch your life, uh, and um, your responsibility is to minister to them uh, first as well because they are they are your first church. So uh, having a healthy relationship with your family members uh, is very essential to uh, to how long you last in worship ministry. Okay, and. Um, the third relationship that makes or breaks is your relationship with your senior pastor. Okay. Uh, and if you're the senior pastor, your relationship with your worship pastor as well. So a couple of things that needs to, uh, um, that you need to be aware of is um, three vital ingredients for a healthy relationship between pastor and worship pastor is one is the you respect each other. You take each other's thoughts and ideas into consideration. You take the church's situation or the circumstance or the condition uh, into consideration. Okay. Um, and then finally, communication. It's key. Uh, communicate. There is no such thing as over communicating with each other, especially within the team of, 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 a, of a pastoral team. Okay. Keep, uh, you know, Keep keeping your pastor in the loop, keeping your pastor updated. Um, it's very essential. Okay, um, your pastor might not always like it. It's like, hey, what is this guy? Here? He's just talking too much. Or give... it's okay, right? It's better than having no communication. Uh, you know, because uh, the the line is so thin, you don't know which is enough, which is too much. So by the time you figure out, okay. I shouldn't cross this line and whatnot. You wasted a lot of time uh, not communicating, uh, right? So uh, it's important to just keep 
giving an update of what's happening uh, where you are in your walk uh, in your spiritual life um, as well okay so communication is very important to keep your relationship with your pastor healthy okay um, and the fourth relationship is with your extended team members uh, people who are serving with you um, uh, you know in the worship team uh, with you okay uh, and uh, so that's another key so uh, be proactive um, you know be the first person to uh, you know message and ask hey how are you doing how's life what's happening uh, etc etc okay so as a leader you make an effort to get to know your people okay to encourage them uh, to you know if they're feeling burnt out uh, because if there are say for example uh, 20 people in your team uh, under your supervision um, all 20 of them will be going through different life challenges and uh, you as a shepherd which will actually look in the next chapter as one of your roles um, it's your responsibility in a way to uh, encourage them to keep them motivated to to you know make sure that they are on the right track in their walk with god okay uh, so that's the four relationship that can make or break us um and uh so a so couple of goals of for the worship uh, ministry is you nurture people uh you are being uh, you know you are creating a culture a, a consistent um, and a beautiful worship atmosphere environment for people to flourish as well okay establishing longevity in the volunteer force um, okay and all of this happens by nurturing if if the first point is taken care of the second and the third point uh, is a default is a result of the first point okay um, and from there on we looked at uh, the daily tasks of running a worship ministry daily tasks uh, you know what goes on on a on a daily basis on running a worship ministry okay the first one is uh, scheduling and rostering teams okay in this we saw there are two different methods and how you can go about rostering teams one is the team model the other is the band model okay uh, and I, I hope you remember and i had the time to go through this because i don't have the time to just go through all of it again okay so understanding the team model and the difference between the team model and band model which will help your worship ministry and your church is very crucial okay that's the one of the tasks the second task is pastoring uh, your team members okay same uh, just goes back to that fourth relationship that says uh, you know take care of your team members your extended team members uh, the task of meeting with your pastor again in connection with communication that's what happens in the meeting with your pastor isn't it you are communicating your vision your goal your desires for your ministry for worship ministry your the plans for worship ministry for that calendar year or you know for the next 5 years okay um, the task of budgeting and paying the resources, uh, you know, for this, you will also, you know, uh, if your church has an accountant that's in charge of the payments and whatnot, you are closely working with that person as well as they, okay, you know, the payment needs to be made for this, uh, for that institution or for that vendor, because we used so-and-so for this worship shoot, we hired you know two three cameras um etc cetera, etc cetera, for you know for the video shoot i'm just giving an example and i hope you get it right so you're working closely with uh, an account with, with your ministry's accountant as well to make sure that the budgeting and paying resources uh, are in check and uh, budgeting also involves approval from your senior pastor right uh, i mean um, i'm not sure how it will be in every other ministry uh, but uh, like so at, at least at at APC, what we do is if you are planning for an event, say worship retreat, right? Um, we get the budget from the uh, uh, from the place that where we will be staying or going to, right? Um, for a campsite. So we get okay, how much is it per head, uh, per uh, you know per person per night or per day, and so they'll give us a quote. Um, and we kind of negotiate everything, and then we go to pastor uh, and say it's like. Pastor, this is the budget. This is the court that we're uh, getting. What do you think about it? Uh, you know, we we speak with him for approval and whatnot. So based on that, uh, that's another task that you go about doing. Uh, you know, in worship ministry, um, the task of planning music for you. Okay, you, uh, we cannot 
we can not talk about worship ministry and not about music because it is involved right so task of planning music um, is very crucial okay and uh, the task of sharing in the wider pastoral work of the church right? so as soon as you start working for the church uh, with the church um, you are open to also help out in other ministries uh, if 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 and when needed right uh, so when uh, if uh, if someone from uh, say media comes and asks for help uh, you know and it's not necessarily in your job description uh, you know on the paper you you're not going to say it's like hey it's not in my job description that's not my responsibility don't bother me uh, but you know it's very different working in the um, in 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 a church is that you you have to be open to help okay that is taking the task of sharing in the wider pastoral work it's like helping another person your colleague and whatnot and also knowing when to say no okay like if you if there are certain responsibilities for the day that you have to do and you have not finished uh, it's okay to say no say i'm yet to complete my task uh, if i'm free i will let you know OK, so the heart of our serving should always be there, but not at the cost of compromising in your work, in your task. Right. Uh, so that's uh, the task. And finally, we saw the task of honing your musical and leadership skills. OK, it's not just musical skills. It's also the leadership skills because worship ministry uh, is a huge part of it is about uh, how you lead people. And uh, is your leadership skills up to par? Okay, and I'm sure you are learning a lot of that. Uh, you must have learned a lot of that in uh, Christian leadership course, right? Uh, cool. So that was the seven tasks and tasks of uh, daily tasks of worship ministry. And from there on, we went into chapter four, uh, which is worship ministry in the local church, which is the organizational aspect of it. Okay. Um, so. Uh, again, once again, guys, I know that um, it's too early for me to ask this, but uh, what, is there any other thoughts or questions that you had about chapter three, the previous chapter? Yes, no, maybe. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, Siddharth. Um, Great. So organizational aspect in chapter four, we saw that uh, how uh, the worship ministry at APC is organized. OK, so one thing you have to realize is that I've only mentioned worship ministry under pastor here. Right. But if you just, you know, imagine there are, there are several invisible boxes beside this, like there's children ministry. There's so many other ministry that uh, comes under the supervision of the pastor. Uh, right. So it's a really, really engaging for the senior pastor of the church. That's why it makes the communication and follow-ups all the more important because pastor here is, you know, is, is overseeing like the media ministry, the children ministry, uh, worship ministry, and so on, so, so forth, okay? So uh, again, it's just to emphasize on, on the point of communication, it's very crucial, okay? So at APC, this is how it's organized. Uh, you can see the chart there. Um, all right, and uh, very briefly in page uh, 41, uh, the next page basically, we see briefly the role of a pastor in context to worship ministry. Okay, the role of a pastor in context to worship ministry. Okay, so he's the one who provides the general vision, direction, motivation. Uh, he meets with the worship pastor. He tells, this is my heart for the year. And this is where I would like to see the church go in the area of worship or church grow in the area of worship. Okay, so he sets the tone. Um, and also his life as an example, uh, you know, the call to be a worshiper the, uh, is very crucial. Okay, uh, and also... Uh, it's not only the worship pastor's role to teach uh, the congregation on worship, but it's also the senior pastor's role to uh, not only be a worshiper, but also teach on worship. Okay. Um, so this is where we kind of stopped uh, last class. And this is quite a recap uh, right? to do. I hope you are with me. Okay. And, and have been able to absorb some of these uh, common points, but very important foundational points and keys, uh, you know, 
uh, in worship ministry. And now we will look at the role of the worship pastor. Okay, um, the, the worship pastor provides overall leadership for congregation, band, singers, and in most churches, the sound team, the slide projection team during worship. Uh, he provides overall leadership for, uh, again, under, and there are a lot of teams under his supervision. Uh, and so the leadership skills, uh, you don't have to be perfect, but then you have to keep learning and how to improve, how to get better, how to get better, because we all learn from mistakes, isn't it? So uh, keeping that in mind, the seven roles of, a, of the worship pastor, okay, um, the seven principles uh, a role of worship ministry leadership that will keep your ministry growing deep and strong for a long time. Okay. First up, the role of the worship pastor. The worship pastor as a priest. What does he do? So we help to bridge people's connections with God. Okay. Uh, what did the priest do, right? In the Old Testament, priest. Uh, he represented the nation of Israel, the high priest, right? He went in uh, and he represented, he was the connection, uh, you know, of, of divinity and humanity. One person represented all, um, of, uh, all of the nation of Israel. So worship pastor as a priest, uh, it's a huge, huge uh, role, uh, right? The word priest may project... The fall, uh, images of flowing robes, uh, clerical colors, the ephod, etc., etc. <laughs> if that's what comes to your mind, uh, you may respectfully toss those mental images to the side for now. Uh, but as a priest, in the purest sense of the term, it simply means a bridge builder. Okay, like we just discussed, that the high priest was a representative for, between God and uh, the nation of Israel. It was a bridge. You may prefer to think of it as, as a pastoral role in your church community and worship ministry, but with a different twist. Okay, so uh, one of your roles as a worship pastor uh, is you are a bridge builder. Okay, uh, now the bridge is not always, you know, it's, it's two-way, isn't it? It's not just point A, point B. No, it's point B and point A as well. Okay, uh, that's the beauty of the high priest is when the high priest went before God, he represented Israel. And when the high priest came back to the people of Israel, he represented God. So there's a two-way, you know, representation that is happening. And that's what a bridge does, isn't it? So you go and then you can come back on that same bridge. So uh, your role as a worship pastor, and I, and I pray that you will, uh, the Holy Spirit will continue to empower and reveal uh, to you uh, the role of a bridge builder or as a priest, okay? You're constantly working towards building a bridge and connecting people to God and vice versa. The second um, role is the worship pastor as a prophet, okay? We challenge the church to follow Jesus and actually be disciples. The word prophet may similar uh, may to the word priest above, conjure up an image of a beard figure uh, with justice with some long stick and whatnot. Okay, or you may think of someone, uh, if you're in more charismatic circles, like regularly offers what they believe God is speaking to them. Uh, you know, it's it's not always about thus say the Lord and whatnot, right? <sighs> but in this case, uh, we're going right back to the Hebrew roots. That means that mean to prophesy. At its foundation, right, to prophesy means simply to speak or sing or by inspiration. Okay, to prophesy means to speak or sing by inspiration. Okay, that word inspiration here, right, it comes from um, the Latin word inspirito. It means in spirit. Okay, um, in spirit, it's the Holy Spirit in us. He is the one who inspires us to speak and sing. Um, and also it, um, uh, I think, 
uh, there's another, there was another word that comes from the same word as inspiration and inspirito is, uh, you know, these ch old church cathedrals, you must have seen these old, uh, you know, like they, it has these pointy things, right? Like different, uh, you know, this old architectures, these cathedrals, if you've seen, but that's called an in inspirito or something. Okay. Uh, it simply means pointing upwards, um, you know, pointing towards the sky. So another takeaway from that is like, you know, to prophesy simply means, uh, you know, to speak or sing in the inspiration, which always points upwards to God, right? Um, so in that sense, we are always seeking to speak as those speaking the very words of God to people. Okay, so uh, again, very similar to bridge builder, the priest. Um, all right, uh, let's go on. The third role of a worship pastor is simple, a worship pastor as teacher. We teach, uh, you know, we educate uh, the worship team members. We we teach them on worship. Uh, we lead by, we have to lead by example. Uh, okay, we educate the church about worship and what it means to be a worshiping Christian, to walk a life uh, of worship. Right. One of the famous definitions for worship is worship is a lifestyle. Worship is not just a genre of music. It's uh, it, it's it's not just a language. It's uh, like I said, it's not not only about a style of music and whatnot, but worship is a lifestyle, right? In everything that you do, do as though you were doing it unto God. Paul writes, right? Um, so. Your life should teach. Uh, at the same time, also uh, teach. Like uh, again, you uh, if you know if if you've been in APC, you know that there is weekend schools that happens, isn't it? Um, every I mean, every first Saturday of the month, uh, and then there are multiple workshops and seminars. Um, so all of those are educational mediums where we teach and equip the congregation. We keep it open for the congregation to come, spend an entire day and learn on a topic. Uh, and one of the topics that you can teach on is worship. Okay, so worship pastor, it is your responsibility to also teach. You're a teacher, okay? And then uh, the worship pastor, as a pastor, we care for our community as shepherds. Recognizing the lines of leadership, okay? Um, the shepherding the people in worship ministry takes patience, but God seems to back the effort over time with grace and strength that grows in the team. Okay? Uh, reads, I mean, Second Timothy chapter 2 is a wonderful chapter on pastoral encouragement that Paul gives to his young mentor, um, uh, mentoree, that is Timothy, right? Uh, find it in your heart to lead and to lead as a pastor. So, uh, you know, you see this one of the key words there, when it, uh, which is very popular uh, in in the, in the pastoral circle at least is most. You know, we often refer to a pastor as a shepherd, isn't it? The shepherd uh, of the flock, right? Um, but if you actually uh, just study a little deeper of how the life of a shepherd was back then, okay? For example, when David writes, the Lord is my shepherd, okay? And Dave, David was also, also, already a shepherd. He was also a shepherd before he became a king and whatnot, right? You know, when, when we think of a shepherd taking the flock, uh, you know, sheep and goats, going into, you know, for grazing, uh, we think of the mountains being full green, like Uttaranchal or, you know, Kashmir is so beautiful and green and lush, like Switzerland or something, okay? But in the Israel's region, okay, in, in the, it's called the wilderness of, it, it's a Judean wilderness. That's, it simply means it's like a desert, like a, almost like a barren land, okay? It, it rains only two months in the whole year, not much, but during December, Jan, okay? But otherwise, the, the, the terrain is pretty dry and rough and whatnot. 
um, and the shepherd will take his flock and he'll be gone for long hours. Okay, so if a shepherd, as a shepherd, I take my flock and go at six o'clock in the morning, I will not be back until like late seven or, or 8 p.m. That's a long time to be out there in the wilderness all by yourself. There's no one to talk to. You, it's just you and the flock. Right? So if, when you think of pastoring, uh, you know, uh, as uh, you know, as as a shepherd, um, it is challenging, isn't it? Um, like, you know, shepherding people is you need to have a lot of patience. You need to care for them. You need to know where to take as a shepherd to take the flock and go. You know, okay, if I take them, I know that that's where green pasture is. I know where to take them for still waters. I know where to take them so that they can lie down in green pastures. I know the paths of righteousness. The shepherd should know all of this. That was expected, right? Uh, and so that is the same as expected of us as, as worship pastors and as pastors. Uh, you know, how good a shepherd are we? Do we know where to lead our people for green pastures? Do we know where to lead our, our you know, our people for, you know, for rest and and still waters? Uh, I'm speaking, of course, in Psalm 23 language, okay? But, uh, but yeah, I hope we all, you know, get that point. Um, okay, so worship pastor as a pastor, shepherding your people with care is uh, very important. And the fifth uh, role of a worship pastor is a worship pastor as an intercessor. Okay. Uh, what comes to your mind when you hear the word intercessor or intercession? What comes to your mind? Guys, I'm asking you a question. <laughs> right, okay. Dave says someone who stands between the gap. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Mediator. Okay. Praying for someone. Yes. It's as simple as that, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you, Aaron. What else? What else? What else? Okay. Connect. Someone who is there on behalf of me. Mm. Yeah. What else comes? Intercessor. Uh, give me some of the names, uh, you know, from the Bible who interceded. Okay, Abraham. Uh, also, give me an example. Okay, when you say Abraham, what exactly? Uh, so, which incident? I I know what you're doing. Uh, which incident you're referring to? But I want you to say it as well. Anybody, Abraham, uh, Dave, or Aaron. You can unmute and speak. It's fine. Right, praying for the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, "Okay, even if there, like, if there are ten people, will you save the city? Will you not destroy the city?" Like Abraham intercedes for the city, isn't it? Okay, that's Abraham. Okay, who intercedes for the city of Sodom and Gomorrah? Okay, um, Kiran, you mentioned David. Um, so when does he intercede? Uh, give me an example. Okay. God of gets money. Jesus prayed. Okay, but uh, was that really intercession? Uh, 
Okay, fine. Uh, which, uh, um, but, G but yeah, Jesus did, uh, you know, in uh, uh, in John chapter 17 as well. It's one of the most beautiful prayers of intercession. Okay, Abraham. So, yeah, um, and a couple of examples. Uh, when you think of um, Moses, right? When God, God is like, I'm going to destroy the stiff-necked people. I'm not going to go with them. And Moses is like, okay, they are not my people. They are your people. Uh, you know, I didn't deliver them. You delivered them. You know, um, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah um, Moses, uh, who interceded that way. Okay, and um, okay, how many of you all, uh, you know, know about Esther? Esther interceded, isn't it? She calls for a fast. She intercedes, right? She interceded. She stand. She stood in the gap, isn't it? So. Like similarly, there's example after an example, okay. Uh, there's actually a book called All the Prayers in the Bible. Uh, and all the, in and also I think there's, I'm not sure who's the author, but all the intercessory prayers in the Bible. So um, guys, this, this role of a pastor as an intercessor, you see all these people and all of them were leaders like you th you look at moses moses was actually a shepherd isn't it for 40 years he he, he took care of his father-in-law's flock right you know a uh, pastor a shepherd okay uh, but he was also an intercessor and abraham also comes from the lineage from the you know, type of, uh, of flocks so when you when you read genesis it says that he had a lot of flock right when he came back from egypt uh, he had a lot of flock and uh, livestock etc um, so a uh, worship pastor, a shepherd as an intercessor, all of these people, key leaders in the Bible interceded. It simply means like you all said, standing in the gap in between something, in between someone, right? And literally saying, okay, Abraham, what he was doing is like God's wrath. He wanted to pour on Solomon and Gomorrah. He said like, no, wait, he's in the middle. Abraham was in the way. He was standing in the gap. He was requesting, praying, you know, uh, some, something be done. Um, and like Aaron also mentioned, it simply means, you know, praying for someone, right? Um, in the last year and a half, at least almost two years now, right, during the pandemic and COVID, how many times have you said, I'm praying for you? I have said, Many, many times in the last year and a half, I've said I'm praying for you more than I've ever said in the last 32 years of my life. <laughs> I'm exaggerating a little bit, but not that much. You know, it's intercession is simply that, you know, and it's so much in line with being proactive as a leader and saying like, you know, just sending a message saying like, hey, Siddharth, I hope you are doing well. Uh, I'm praying for you. Just letting that person know that you are praying for them, you know, is your role as an intercessor. Okay, and let me just pause and say that uh, we need intercessors in our church, in our ministries. Um, you know, it's not the most, uh, uh, what do I say? It's, it's not the most glamorous role you know, it's not one of those roles where you get, where, where one person gets the spotlight, like unlike worship leaders is under the spotlight, the lights and whatnot on the stage. But intercessor's role has always been behind the scene. And we need uh, more people who are willing to pray behind the scenes. We need intercessors. So a worship pastor as an intercessor is not just another point, fifth point there, but I really hope that you know, God will just take you deeper into that role and reveal uh, the beautiful call of intercessor over all our lives, okay? Uh, and the, f the sixth point here is worship pastor as a mentor, okay? We're always looking for the person to fill our shoes and to fill the needs of uh, exemplary worship leaders in our community, okay? We're always looking to train and equip younger generation or the other person to eventually take over the role of what you were doing. So it is important, right? Um, in the, why, why, why this point is important and why I wanted to just mention it here is that, that you, you've been in charge of a, of, of a role for a long time. 
as a leader like you've been the worship pastor for, let's say for 10 years or what not and uh, there hasn't been a single person who was trained to take over the role when you leave so what happens when you leave there's this incredible gap or void you know it's like okay this is confusion here okay what do we do what do we do okay this person used to do all of this all of this now and there's nobody who knows to do all of that because nobody was trained so you take it again as a leader you take it on yourself uh you know to just go that extra mile and say is like hey uh you know i want to teach you on this i want to teach you on how to put a song list i want to teach you on how to roster a worship team i want to teach you on how to teach i want to teach you how to pray i want to walk with you i want to teach you how to lead how to be a leader how to handle uh, certain situations how to confront certain people uh, you know certain certain attitudes in a people that is not correct how to do all of these things so it's very important as a leader that you begin uh, having um, you know a mentee uh, you know with you and start training them so uh, one of the very popular uh, you know procedure in mentoring process is this okay the mentor says i do it you watch me do it i will teach you to do it then you do it with me then i will do it with you and then you do it on your own and then the cycle continues you mentor others okay so let me just walk through this points again so first progression in a mentoring progression is uh, i mean once again guys this is something that uh, i follow when i have to uh, you know train someone i'm not saying this is how you should do it uh, but it's uh, i th- i felt like this is a very easy pathway like a map you know to to train someone so uh the, the the first point i'm not even going to talk to that person okay uh I, and I, i'll just do what i'm doing for a while and then i'll invi- invite that person to watch me do it i'm not going to teach that person the person is just going to watch me do whatever it is you know if it's worship leading you, you can you can put it down and then i will teach you how to do it i will i will open up my thought process uh what is uh you know uh, what is my workflow when it comes to this i will teach you to do it and then i will let you do it with me okay and then i will do it with you that means the your your mentee will take the lead and you are just there to support and this point the sixth point is that the mentee does it on their own without you being there okay this is a, I, i in my opinion is a, is a very nice mentoring progression um that if you like it uh, you know uh, you can you can use it it'll be very helpful and effective um, i believe okay so that is the sixth point of a worship pastor as a mentor okay and finally uh, once again not a very popular and a glamorous role but the worship pastor as an administrator okay everybody said amen right the worship pastor as an administrator okay. uh we order resources and steward people's energy to achieve lasting results okay the gift of administration doesn't often come up on many worship leaders spiritual gift tests It's like what is your gifts okay i am an incredible administrator <laughs> um yeah it doesn't come by default uh but i always remember again you know what pastor ashish says if you could just mix your 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 spiritual gift with with a skill of administration uh you know god will use you mighty mightily okay because that's what he was told by another person um uh, right he was he was said uh, another pastor told pastor ashish is like ashish if you can just uh, bring your spiritual gifts uh, your anointing um with the with the skill of administration uh organized administration your ministry will uh be very successful and effective okay so administration is very important uh so 
uh, being part, you know, I've been part of this uh, in the local church before um, where the worship pastor was not necessarily weak, but then, you know, certain things could have been improved in terms of, uh, you know, administratively. Okay. So uh, you ask yourself this question, what are the weakness that needs to be worked on, uh, you know, and, and, you, and you improve in, the, in that area? Okay, uh, it could be just having an organized uh, way to conduct the audition, or uh, you know, to say, or, or in sending out a roster. Okay, uh, an organized way, an administered way of how a Sunday morning should go, you know, should look like, uh, the practice timing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so there is no chaos. Administration is simply just that, isn't it? Making sure that there is a clean flow. Of everything that you do, that's it. That's all administration is. It is a simple workflow in everything that you do. That means once you have this simple workflow in your administration, then the next person who follows you will know, even if you are not there, to a certain extent. Okay, the work becomes easy because of the simple workflow chart that you have created. Okay, that also is another form of uh, an administration. Uh, Okay, um, and then look if uh, don't be hesitant uh, to uh, buy, uh, you know, certain tools if that will help you. For example, a f you know, a few administrative tools that uh, that can help you is a scheduling tool, uh, uh, how to plan a set. You know, all of this is available online now, guys. I mean, uh, community building tools, for example, a core team, uh, you know, appoint people to task, but do so slowly with it's you know it's always easier to appoint than to disappoint okay so um, delegate you know have a core team in your worship ministry okay uh, have like a team of six to eight people they are the core team that you discuss with uh, you know who will help you with the administrative process okay um, once again at APC we have a core team that will help okay it's not just me and Pastor Jakes who is the worship pastor at APC um, and I help him. And if you, every time we plan for a worship retreat, it's not just the two of us who is running around, you know, everything. Uh, on the day of the retreat, there, there are individuals. There is a certain team that takes care of the sound, uh, you know, and, and games if, if you have to do that. Just like a Sunday morning, it has to be organized. It is administered. So having a core team will always be helpful. Okay, um, so those are the seven roles of the worship pastor. Uh, okay, are you guys tired already? <laughs> it's like, that's, that's a lot of roles for a worship pastor. Uh, any questions, guys, uh, so far, or anything that you want to add? I'm going to stop sharing now. So we go for a break um, uh, with the seventh points that we've covered. Does it make sense? Uh, you know, do, were you all able to follow and understand? Okay, any questions? Uh, Siddharth, Kanan, uh, all okay? Prince, Dave. Okay, awesome. Um, right, well, I'll go ahead and uh, stop the recording now. And um, 